Bantamweight's battle for Tachi's top prize is Visalia's Cody Gibson defends his championship against Guam's Kyle Reyes. After starting his career in 2008, the renegade Cody Gibson has traveled the world, showing why he is one of the sport's top 135 pounders. A veteran of the Ultimate Fighting Championship, Gibson has battled and beaten top shelf talent, including Chad George, YL Watson, and Johnny Bedford. However, few victories have been sweeter than his title clinching performance when he defeated Rolando Velasco. Tonight, Gibson looks to retain his title and reclaim his top spot among the best 135 pound fighters in the world. In his way will be TPF veteran Kyle Reyes. Currently riding a streak that has seen three straight first round finishes, Reyes enters the biggest fight of his career with momentum on his side. Born in Guam and now fighting out of Las Vegas, Reyes has his sights set on TPF Gold. Coming up next, it's our main event as Kyle Boom Reyes meets the renegade Cody Gibson. This is Tachi Palace Fights. Kyle Boom Reyes, a purple belt under Robert Drysdale, is a very cerebral fighter. He has been very introspective on his journey as a mixed martial artist saying that this sport has largely saved his life. He wrote down in a notebook two years ago that he wanted to be a champion of an MMA organization. It didn't matter which one, because he believed that it would be the first step to his ultimate goal, a shot inside the UFC. If he defeats Cody Gibson, it would go a long way in realizing that goal. Absolutely, the Tachi Palace belt, I mean, that's that's almost a guaranteed ticket into the, to the UFC, also with the way he finishes fights. He's got three consecutive submissions, and if he can finish a guy like Cody Gibson, he could walk into the UFC off of, his, off of just attaining the title. He's a purple belt under Robert Drysdale, and th there are purple belts, and then there are Robert Drysdale purple belts. There are certain uh, you know, instructors that hand out ranks. It, it just means a bit more than your, your typical everyday uh, rank in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu sometimes. Yeah, Robert Drysdale is one of the guys that we know he's a quality Jiu-Jitsu instructor, um, and Polo Reyes, I'm sorry, Reyes proves it. He proves it every single time when he comes out there. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what he does, if he can get this fight to the mat, and if he can dominate Cody Gibson in the submission game. Kyle Reyes looks to make good on his title shots. Well, if you're a fan of mixed martial arts, you don't need to run to Google to figure out who Cody Gibson is. He's been in the big show. He looks to get back there here tonight, and he needs to do that by beating Kyle Reyes. Can he defeat this young, tough up-and-comer? He already won one battle to get here, Eve. He had a very difficult weight cut. He is now working full-time. He's a high school teacher. He welcomed a daughter five months ago. And he'll be honest with you when you ask him, life has changed quite a bit. Training at the highest level and competing, you know, as a full-time teacher, a full-time husband and father, it forces your hand to be somewhat of a part-time fighter. And I don't want to say that he's not adequately prepared, but weighing in was very difficult for him. He actually shared an interesting story with me. He said he was on the treadmill trying to cut the final few pounds. And when he was in the gym watching television on the, on the TV there, he saw a UFC Unleashed event. And he said, all right, I'm going to make sure that I stay running during this last fight. On the screen was yourself against Josh Thompson. And he said that you were the motivating factor for him to make weight. He stayed on the treadmill, ultimately got the final few pounds off, and he said he didn't know if it would have necessarily came out easy if it wasn't yourself on the screen. <laughs> That's pretty cool, but he must have been really close because the fight didn't last that long. But he's he's brought a, he's, he's brought a daughter into this world, and that that's a lot of lot of motivation to win this fight. I fought Hermes Franca. Uh, I was I was really exhausted in that fight. I felt like I was going to gasp, but I thought to myself, I, if my my son was going through some stuff in the hospital, and if if my son can fight, I can fight. So Cody Gibson, he's, he's, he does this for his daughter. If he does get tired, that won't matter to him. If if, if he's using those things as motivation. Let's take a look at the tail tape for our main event, five five and a rounds for the bantamweight championship of the world. The renegade Cody Gibson stands two inches taller than the challenger Kyle Boom Reyes. We are official for the title, 135 even for both men. The renegade four years older than Reyes, 14 and six for the champion, 11 and four for the challenger. For our official introductions of this bantamweight championship, here's Tyson Johnson.
TPF Fight Fans, it is now time for the main event of the evening. This bout will be five five-minute rounds for the Taji Palace Fights Bantamweight Championship of the World. This bout is being brought to you by the Tachi Palace Hotel and Casino. Introducing first, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. This fighter stands five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He represents Drysdale's Jiu-Jitsu and Zenith BJJ. He has a mixed martial arts record of 11 wins and four defeats. He hails out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Guam. Ladies and gentlemen, your challenger, Kyle Bullray. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner stands five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 135 pounds. He represents Team Elite out of Visalia and Garza Boxing Club. Ladies and gentlemen, he has a mixed martial arts record of 14 wins and 60 feats. He hails out of Visalia, California, and he is the Tachi Palace Fights Bantamweight Champion of the World, Cody the Renegade Gibson. Your referee for this bout will be Mark Lawley. Protect yourself at all times. Follow my instructions at all times. Touch gloves and let's have a good, clean fight. It is champion Cody Gibson defending his title against challenger Kyle Boom Reyes. Mark Lawley getting our main event assignments. Yesterday at the weigh-ins, both of these guys really got in each other's face. Didn't take it too far, shook hands. Very calculated, controlled, yet violent and technical fighters ready to do work here. Nice right hand on the outside by Cody to start the fight. Reyes answers with a kick to the lead leg of Gibson. Cody Gibson comes hard to the bottom. He's, Cody's establishing his range from the outside. And, and maybe he, oh, nice right hand by Reyes. But maybe Cody saw some, oh. oh hard right hand by the goodness. Renegade. Good overhand right. Cody's pulling on that clinch. Knee. Reyes might still be hurt. Nice elbow by Cody Gibson. I think he is. We but this is where he can recover. We talked about Cody Gibson being a bit of a slow starter. Right now, Reyes forced to cover up because Gibson's starting strong. Still. Game oh, is right nice hand. right hand by Reyes, and that guillotine, he's, he's on that front headlock. Good defense. Gibson shot in, you gotta be very careful with the purple belt and Kyle Reyes. He's got that arm in, he's gonna snap him down, yes, good job, and he's working to transition to that back, he can pull that right arm out and circle around, but Cody's doing exactly what he needs to do by getting back to his feet and, and causing, yes, creating space between Nicely him and Cody. Nice him movement and Kyle. by Cody Gibson. Good job for Cody. Cody is a very good wrestler. You're gonna have a hard time controlling him here. Now Kyle has got to extract that right arm and get to that underhook on Cody's left side. Otherwise, oh, that is beautiful. That's good, but Cody's gonna be able to stay behind him unless he can pull that right arm out and get across the hip. And what he's doing right now is gonna kind of isolate that arm. There we go, he's, he's out of that position. Get that right hand to the under, underhook on the far side. Again, we're scheduled five five-minute rounds. Cody Gibson, two-punch combination on the break. The longer this fight goes, it might be hard for Cody. He had that tough w uh, weight cut. We'll see if Kyle Reyes will be better longer than Cody Gibson. But Gibson is a professional. He's been here before. Now, Reyes' last loss was to a guy, Chris Cully. I've trained with Chris. Chris is a really good, he's really competent in the kickboxing department, and he uses his range well. That's what Cody looks like he's doing well in this fight, but he's not using his range well defensively. Kyle has been able to get in and land some big shots and hurt him also early in this fight. Gibson has been working on his boxing. And nice. shown here early. Good. Gibson is leading a little with his head. If you notice, whenever he throws a punch, his body's leaning forward also. And what that does is it allows Reyes to counter because Cody's head is, as a target is closer to Reyes now than it, than it should be with Cody having the reach advantage. Nice. Nice jab, uppercut there by Gibson. Reyes backs up. Another right hand by Gibson. Race with nice head movement. Gibson evades his strikes. Two minutes left in round number one. Nice kick nice to the lead kick leg. Inside kick. 
Ray fires off a kick to the body and another. See, Cody's leading with his head, man. If, if Reyes can, can slip and fire an uppercut at the same time, he's going to do some serious damage to Cody. Cody's got to work on his unboxing from length because he's a very long featherweight. Oh, I'm sorry, bantamweight. This combination Good there head now. Movement by, by Cody. Into the clinch. 90 seconds remaining round number one. Ray is able to punch his way out of the clinch, back at space, eats a jab of Gibson. Another kick there by Gibson. Uppercut lands by the Renegade. Oh, nice. I couldn't tell if that was an elbow or a short right hand, but that was nice. You saw Reyes' head just flash to the right. And Gibson made distance there, went back to Nice space. right hand. These guys are landing good shots from the outside. Where Cody should be have complete advantage because he's so much longer, but Reyes is able to get inside and land shots because Cody's not able to keep him a distance. This left hand by Reyes now, he's inside the clinch. Tries to take down Gibson. It'd be very hard to muscle Gibson to the mat. Extensive wrestling experience before his mixed martial arts career and has largely relied on it throughout his career. He attempted a back elbow there, but gave up his back in the process. Nice, Ooh. he slipped out. Nice uppercut on the inside by Reyes. Bantamweight's really mixing it up here in round number one. Reyes fires off a combination. It's awesome because we got four more of these, right? Yes, sir. Oh, nice, nice. uppercut on the inside by Cody. This round is... It's a close round, but I think Cody is slightly ahead. Right hand there, final 10 seconds, round number one. More punches from Gibson. Hard right hand again by the Renegade. Cody's smiling a little bit. <laughs> Ray is having a good time also. That's, <laughs> that's what I, I love to see fighters when they really want to fight. <laughs> I've had a chance to call more Cody Gibson matches than anyone else in my commentating career. And when Cody Gibson finds himself in a fight, he smiles, he loves it, he adores it. He truly is a, a fighter. And that smile usually doesn't come until rounds three, four. Tonight, came in round number one. Now, my concern is, is Cody starting early? Because he knows that the weight cut was hard and he's gonna have a problem with the gas tank? Or is the gas tank not a concern at all? And he's just starting early because he knows that's what, what one of the knocks on him is. So we'll find out should this fight get into the late third, fourth, and fifth round. See the action here, both men had their moments. Very evenly matched fight. Both Very these guys, match. top shelf phantom weights. La both landed great shots on the outside, big right hands, and they both hurt each other. I think both guys dropped, each, dropped the opponent in the first round. Uh, nobody really proved dominant in that round, but I think I would give the edge to the champion after one. Mark Lawley starts the action for round number two. Cody gives to the champion, Kyle Reyes, the challenger. And Gibson looks a little bit less worse for the wear right now also. But that's not necessarily a telltale sign of, of who's landed the bigger shots. Oh, oh that hard right hand! Shot. Kyle Reyes in trouble! He's done. The Renegade! That's Still the right better hand like champion! Wow! Great Cody right Gibson! You wanted style points, Eve, you got him. I got style, I, I got perfect 10 for that one. That was a great right hand. It seemed like he landed it right between the air and the jaw. Um, I'd love to see the replay and see where that landed. Um, the way Reyes went down, he couldn't even put his hands out to, to, to stop himself. It is, he kind of fell straight to his face. That's a devastating shot. Cody Gibson will enjoy this one. This was a signature victory. For a veteran, here it is, Eve, walk us through the action. He landed that right hand, yeah, right behind the ear, just below the ear and the jaw, and he was able to just turn it on, and, and Reyes was not able to recover. He didn't have the opportunity. He couldn't even get his hands up to protect himself from falling to the mat. So Cody took advantage of, of an opportunity that he created for himself and was able to hold on, his, on to his belt and gonna keep, keep that strap around the waist, take that home to his new little girl. Cody Gibson by knockout. Still developing his game. I think if you're gonna fight Cody Gibson in the future, you've got to worry about something that not a lot of people have really thought too much about, and that's his power. Fortunately, I'm not gonna fight Cody Gibson in the future because I don't want to get hit by one of those things. Cody, he showed some improvement in, in, in two things, in his striking and also in his aggression. 
that aggression part, though, I think is the biggest deal for Cody. That's the kind of thing that will get him back to the octagon by stopping guys, especially guys as good as Kyle Reyes, um, stopping them with strikes and not even in the submission department. Cody Gibson, still the Bantamweight champion. To make it official, here's Tyson Johnson. Ladies and gentlemen, after 21 seconds in round number two, your winner by way of knockout, and still the Tati Palace fight, Bantamweight champion of the world, Cody the Renegade Gibson. All right, I'm here with the champ, the renegade, Cody Gibson. You know, I was talking about you trying to get back to the UFC and said maybe that your second run to the UFC may be harder than your first. When you've been there once, you need style points to get back. Sir, those were style points. First and foremost, I want to say happy birthday to my mom. I'm not going to say hello. She's 29 today, folks. Talk about the first round. It was evenly matched. I've been critical of you in the past about being a slow starter. That wasn't the case tonight. You had a fire from the opening bell. What has changed about you, Cody? Well, one, I had a really tough opponent tonight that motivated me to train hard. He had good striking and jujitsu. So it's one of those guys where no matter where the fight is, he's dangerous. It's not like I can come up with a game plan, like I'm gonna take this guy down and I, I'm, I'm confident I'm better there. It was, you know, I knew this fight could go anywhere, you know, and it did. Uh, I just feel like my power is coming along with my boxing coach. You know, sitting down my punches a little more. I've always had the, the range and under, understanding range, but my power is starting to come around, and that's what you saw tonight. You had a chance to sit cage side with me for a few of Kyle Reyes' fights. Did you look back? Did you see anything? And, and what did tape study tell you, and did it help you here tonight? Well, obviously, if you watch any of his Tashi fights, the guy's got a killer guillotine. He has a modified guillotine, and he actually tried it on me. Not surprisingly, uh, but luckily, my jiu-jitsu coach, Tom Knox, elite team jiu-jitsu, Man, I'm prepared for everything. You know, we studied it. We, we talked about how we could stay out of those positions, and we did. It was a highlight reel performance. What's next? This is your first title defense here at Tachi. Do you think this is enough to get you back to the octagon? Well, I mean, the thing about it is that's three in a row for me. You know, I thought my run in the UFC, I, I didn't get my ass kicked in any fight. They were all, my, whether I won or lost, close fights, uh, either way. I feel like I deserve another shot. I fought some of the best guys in the world to close decisions. I feel like Sean Shelby, you have my phone number, Mr. Shelby. Please hit me up. I, I feel like I, I could beat half the roster tomorrow and the other half next week, so let's go. Whether it's here, whether it's the UFC, we'll be watching, congrats. Cody Gibson and still the Bantamweight champion at Tachi Palace Fight. From top to bottom, it was another fantastic show. Eve Edwards, come on in here, man. This, this was a prime example tonight why this promotion is so important, not only to the Central Valley of California, but this country, this world of mixed martial arts. Yeah, we saw a lot of great fights tonight. I'm a new California transplant. Um, I don't really know the, the young MMA scene out here, but every time I come here to Taji Palace, I see some great fights. And tonight, with all the finishes, all the technique that we saw, I'm really impressed with the young men that fought tonight here at Taji Palace. And it's not going to stop. We have reached the year end here at 2016. We're back in February. We hope you will be too. Taji Palace fights. Let's hear it for everybody here tonight in Lemoore. For Eve Edwards, I'm TJ DeSantis. We'll see you next time at Taji Palace fights.